The Arch Gaming Network is proud to bring you this board game review. Now here's your host, Sean Smith. Hello and thank you for stopping by. Today we're going to take a look in this video, a tutorial for how to play Flashpoint, which was designed by Kevin Lansing and published by Indie Board and Cards. Now, normally on these reviews, we try to have the review, the setup, the walkthrough, tutorial, and final thoughts all into one video. But for this one, we wanted to break it up into three to try and keep the lengths of those down. It's not that the game is overly complex. It's really not. It, but there's enough rules in the setup and in the gameplay that we wanted to make sure that the overall video didn't go, go too long and be able to break this up into uh, some easily digestible clips. So for this one, we're taking a look at a tutorial of how to play. Now, if you want to know how to set up for Flashpoint, uh, there is a video to do that. And then also we have a video for that, that's a review. It just gives you a, uh, an overview of the game and my thoughts about it. I'll have links to those videos in the description. And I will also, if I'm smart enough, I'll try to place links for those uh, on screen as well. So let's go ahead and get started with this tutorial on how to play a recruit level game of Flashpoint. Side. Now in Flashpoint, the way that you win the game is to rescue seven victims. Help me! Or POIs as they call them. Every time you rescue one of them, uh, you'll place them here. Any time a victim is lost, you'll place them here. Now the way to lose the game though is that if you lose four or more victims you've lost the game or if you run out of these uh, damage markers you've also lost the game because the building at that point has collapsed. Alright you'll decide who goes first and then you will be able to start using your action points. Now each player begins the game with four action points. Now, depending on what your special ability is, you may get less or more action points. Those are denoted up here, uh, the regular action points that you, you can take. And then whatever your special ability is, you may be able to get additional action points. The fire captain here is allowed to command another player using two action points. Of course, then there are some other rules according to the card, and you would have to follow those as well. Now, the green player is playing the fire captain, and the red player at this point is going to be playing the rescue specialist. Again, four regular action points, but then also gets three free movement action points that can be used. So what can you do with your action points? Well, the first thing you can do is move. So for one action point, your firefighter can move one space. Now, a firefighter who wants to move through fire, that is two action points. So this to move here would be two, and then that would be three action points to go there. Keep in mind, a firefighter can never end its movement on fire. Now, if at any time you move into a space with a victim, you will reveal that victim. Oh look, it's fluffy. You can now carry that victim with you out of the building, but to move with a victim costs you two action points, so that would be two and four. The same goes with hazardous materials. If you want to take a hazardous material and take it out of the building, to do that, to carry it, costs two instead of one. Once you carry a hazardous material outside the building, it is discarded from the game. When your player comes upon a door that is closed, you can use one action point to open that door or to close it. Remember, uh, fire cannot go through a closed door. Also, firefighters can use a movement to go through a destroyed wall. If this wall had two damage markers on it, it is considered destroyed, and now a firefighter can go through it as if it were an open door. Keep in mind that a firefighter can only move orthogonally. So you could not go diagonal to any of the spaces, and of course you can't go through walls as well. Ah! But just keep in mind, up, down, left, right. With your action points, you can also fight the fire. 
by either standing on the fire or adjacent to the fire, you are able to use one action point to turn smoke, uh, fire into smoke and another action point to completely extinguish it. Another action your firefighter can take is to chop. So for two action points, they can chop through a wall and add one damage marker. Why would you do that? Well, obviously, if you were trapped in a corner or needed to get out of the building quickly or out of a room quickly, you could chop through the wall to escape. All right, another thing you can do with your action points is to drive a vehicle. Now, to drive an ambulance, you do not have to be on it. The fire engine, you do have to be on it to drive it. But let's say that this fire or ambulance was over here and you are trying to rescue Fluffy here and you're by the door and it's your turn. For two action points, you can move the ambulance to the next spot on the board, either clockwise or counterclockwise. You could move it here for two action points or you could drive it here. Because remember, keep in mind that in order to save a victim, you have to get them to an ambulance. Okay, let's talk about the fire engine, all right? now. If your firefighter is on the fire engine, you can spend two of your action points to swap out your specialist, okay? Now you can only do that when you are standing here. Of course, you can also only drive the fire engine for two action points if you're standing on it. But another thing you can do is to fire the deck gun. Again, you have to be on the fire engine to do this. So let's say that this part of the building, as you can see, it's raging on fire. Now, the building is broken into four quadrants, and you can see there's a dotted red line that surrounds this particular quadrant, the quadrant that this fire truck is in. Okay, so you can fire into that quadrant provided your fire truck is also in that same quadrant. You cannot fire into a quadrant if another firefighter is in there. So this one is just outside of the range. It's in the other quadrant to the right of it. To fire the deck gun costs four action points. When you decide to do that, you're gonna roll both dice. Let's say we've rolled a red four and a black five. All right. If either of the dice are not in the quadrant that you rolled, flip the die over. So we look at the four. Well, the four is in this quadrant. These right here are the fours in this quadrant. The five, however, is not. It's here just outside of the quadrant. When that happens, you're going to take that and just flip it over, whichever die is not in the quadrant, and that will now be your coordinates, four, two, which is right here. When you fire the deck gun, it's going to extinguish the fire in the target spot completely, so that would go away. It's also going to extinguish the fire in all adjacent spaces. So this one would go away and this one would go away. This one cannot because there is a wall. The splash over from the deck gun cannot go through walls or through closed doors. If this wall had one more damage, then yes, this would go away as well. Also, this is outside of the boundary, but there's no wall or door here, so it also gets to be removed. Okay, we're not going to talk about all of the different specialists in the game, but I do want to point out the paramedic. And that is because the paramedic has the special uh, treat tokens or Red Cross tokens that go with it. The paramedic can treat a victim for one action point. When you treat a victim, they can now move with any firefighter using one move to go to a space to space instead of the normal two. Now one more thing about action points, you don't have to spend all of your action points. For any action points that you do not spend, you can take one of these green tokens and you can use them on later turns. You can never have more than four of these and you just place them in front of you and use them when needed. Okay, so that takes care of your action phase. Once you have used your action points or banked the ones that you don't want to use, 
uh, the, the player will now go to step two, which is advanced fire. Let's say you rolled the dice and it came up five, five. You will place a smoke marker in that spot. If you rolled five, five and there was already smoke in that spot, you flip it over to fire. But now let's assume that you unfortunately rolled a red three and a black five. That is right here. Since the spot is already on fire, you have now created an explosion. When you create an explosion, the fire will go out all four directions orthogonally. So you would put a fire here. There's a wall here and the fire can't go through that. So you put a damage marker here. Going this way, there's fire already adjacent to it. So you keep following the fire and there's an open door. So it will go through the open door and you'll place a fire there. The worst part of it is that the fire goes this way as well. And because you were caught as a firefighter in the explosion, you get knocked down and the victim is unfortunately lost. After you have advanced the fire, you now have to resolve any flashovers. A flashover occurs whenever there is smoke next to fire. So in this case, this now becomes fire. And because now this smoke is next to this fire, it also becomes fire. Now it wouldn't have become fire here because there's a wall. However, uh-oh, we have hazardous materials in that spot. No! That takes us to the next step. We have to resolve any hazmats. When a hazmat catches on fire, it causes an explosion, which means that fire will once again radiate in all four directions. There's a wall here, so now it's damaged. It goes this way, comes this way, damaged, and then follows the path, and you place fire there. Additionally, you have to put a hot spot in the spot where the hazardous material was. Remember, hot spots cannot be extinguished from the game. The next step is to uh, resolve any flare-ups. Now, flare-ups occur when the target spot of the advanced fire, you know, when you rolled the first uh, rolled the die to advance the fire, contained a hot spot. So let's say you had rolled a four red four and a black three. Well, you would have placed this here, and during the resolve flashover, this would have changed from smoke to fire. But let's just assume this wasn't even here, okay? Let's just say, you know, you th there was a hot spot, you rolled four three, and now you put smoke there. Uh, there, well, we'd have to assume there was nothing there either. So now there would be no flashover because this is, there's a wall here, so uh, the fire would not cause a flashover. So it doesn't matter. If the target spot had contained a hot spot, you have to now resolve that. And you do that by advancing fire again. So you would take the two dice, you'd roll it, you have a five and a four right here. So you would place smoke in that spot and additionally, you have to place a hot spot as well. After you've resolved any flare-ups, you now resolve any knockdowns. This firefighter was knocked down during the explosion, so they have to go back to the ambulance. At this point, we would also resolve any lost POIs or victims. We already took care of that during the explosion. And now the final thing you would do on your turn is you would roll again to see where a new victim is because you, during every turn you have to have at least three out here. So we rolled a three, three. So we take one, place it, and now your turn is over. And now the next player will go. You'll continue to play, trying to put out the fire. Your goal, of course, again, is to rescue seven victims before you lose four of them or before you run out of these cubes because if you do that the building collapses and the game is over and that is how you play flashpoint okay so that is how you play a recruit level game of flashpoint if you're looking for how to set up or my thoughts and a quick review of flashpoint 
there are links to those videos in the description. Now I tried to cover all the rules in, in the game, at least at the recruit level. If I got something wrong, please let me know. If you liked the video, please leave a comment or a like or subscribe to the channel. Once again, I thank you for stopping by. Thank you for visiting the Arch Gaming Network. For more great content, check us out at archgamingnetwork.com. Subscribe to our YouTube channel. Follow us on Twitter and like us on Facebook.